Hello, my name is Babin Kumar and in this video we are going to learn Kubernetes security concepts. When you deploy Kubernetes cluster, it is unsecure and you must have to apply patches to secure your Kubernetes cluster. So in that scenario, I'm going to let you know that what are the security and what we need to secure on Kubernetes cluster. So let me show you the architecture of Kubernetes cluster. So, so this is my Kubernetes cluster architecture. And here you can see that I have ma one master node at here and uh, three nodes are working as a worker node. So you can see on master node, there is ATCD components, controller manager, API server, and scheduler. When you also see on the nodes, you have networking, kubelet, container runtime, OS, node one. If you will see that there is API server component, which is REST API, and it is basically major component on Kubernetes cluster that interact with other multiple servers like worker node, and also user and developer and uh, service account, I mean automated service required to authenticate on Kubernetes cluster, they def directly go to the API server. So let me tell you that what are the entry points that security can be patched. So look at this, uh, on master, of course the API server component has to be secure at this point because this is the entry point for many uh, things like uh, nodes, worker nodes and uh, any developer and users to manage on master. And also if you are, so basically master is also a server and a nodes is also a server. So let's suppose master is created on Linux machine. And this must be a physical machine or the shared machine or the VM machine, virtualization or the cloud machines. So this, will, this is basically a server. So if I'm saying that you must have to secure your server by installing and deploying patches, doing hardening of the service, servers and the user who will log in on this. So this everything has to be secured. So let me take you to the brief introduction that what and what security can be patched. So here I have another diagram. So there are four components you need to think when you talk about Kubernetes security. One is controlling access to Kubernetes API. Second one is controlling access to Kubelet. And third one is controlling the capabilities of workload or user at runtime and protecting cluster components from compromises. Uh, let me give you the overview of each. Controlling access to the Kubernetes API. So you must have, you must have understood that what, on what API I'm talking about. So this is the first API that we need to secure. Okay, so th there will be must, there will be others API that has to be secured. I'll talk, I'll come to that point also. Second one is controlling access to Kubelet. So basically when, let me take you the architecture once more. So here you can see that the connectivity in between master and the nodes is basically Kubelet. Kubelet is the service which allow communication in between worker node and master node. Kubelet keep the track of each and every ports and services and volumes which is existing on that particular worker nodes. So this has to be secure, definitely. Controlling the capabilities of a workload or a user at runtime. So definitely you need to uh, also secure the workload of the pods, services, and volumes. And you must have to think on, on, on this way. And the last one is protecting cluster components from compromise. Uh, if I'm talking about the cluster, each and every components of the cluster, like from the, uh, if I'm talking about the server or talk about the user or talk about the API, talk about the pods, everything has to be, everything is the part of the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So each part has to be secure before, before it get compromised. Let me take you the brief introduction of the each security components. If I'm talking about the Kubernetes API, you must use TLS certificate for all API traffic. Ensure all API communication in the cluster is encrypted by TLS. Identify potential unsecured traffic and secure it. 
API authentication and there is API authorization. API authentication is basically an entry where a user take their username and password and get inside the Kubernetes cluster. So once the user credential is uh, verified that this user has provided credential is appropriate, then that user get entry into the Kubernetes cluster. And the authorization is basically a role that user can perform on Kubernetes cluster. Let's say some user can do only get services, get pods, get uh, volumes, but they cannot create any pod or they cannot create any other components. But some other user have a role that they are admin. They can do anything on the Kubernetes cluster by deploying application, by deploying pods, by deploying services, anything that they can perform on the Kubernetes cluster. So basically, if I'm talking about the API authorization, you can use a role-based authentication com uh, process, or if you are using about, uh, sorry, authorization, and if you are using API authentication, you can use LDAP or any centralized user database that to authenticate of your Kubernetes cluster, and also to log in into Kubernetes cluster by any API. The second one is controlling access to Kubernetes. So this is very simple. Kubernetes expose HTTPS endpoint which grant powerful control over the node and con contains. By default, Kubernetes are allow unauthenticated access to this API. I mean, if anyone can, ex if anyone has a Kubernetes, any nodes, and if they get access of node, so with the help of Kubernetes, they can reach to the Kubernetes cluster and they can do uh, unsecure things. So they can create a risk of your Kubernetes cluster. Sorry. Uh, the last component of uh, the third last component of controlling and capabilities of workload runtime. As I said, that limiting resources uses on a cluster can also uh, secure your Kubernetes cluster. Let's say you let's say you have a five namespace, and in each namespace in each namespace you create resources like pods, services, volumes. So you must limit the quota like CPU quota, RAM quota, volume quota port quota, services quota. So this has to be a uh, limit. Controlling what privileged containers run with. I mean, you can, uh, when you create, when you create declarative of port definition, deployment definition, security definition. So in that way, wherever uh, login is possible, you can use security context like this. You can see that uh, in my port definition, I have used the specs security context and a user can, I mean, this pod can be accessed from this user only. Also, you can restrict network access. I mean, outside of the network cannot be accessed your Kubernetes cluster. Controlling which nodes pods may access. I mean, by default, there are no restrictions on which node may run on or run a pod. I mean, you, by initial, uh, by default, there is no restriction on any nodes that which pod will run on which nodes. So you can use node selector or 10-10 toleration to restrict your nodes that which code will be deployed on which nodes. And the last one is restrict access to ETCD. Of course, because ETCD is the major component of your Kubernetes cluster. And uh, definitely you must have to secure ETCD because by, by creating TLS certificate or by uh, uh, restricting the accessibility uh, to the ETCD and by backing and taking backup of uh, ETCD, and creating master high availability of ETCD. So this is this is all uh, required to secure your ETCD because it's a major component of your Kubernetes cluster. You can also enable auditing and restrict access to alpha and beta features. Make sure you don't use any alpha and beta features because alpha and beta feature is a still in development process and it's you cannot trust on alpha and beta features uh, uh, packages. So always try to avoid any alpha and beta packages in your production Kubernetes cluster. Rotate infrastructure credential. I mean, in, in your infrastructure, you use uh, server login, you use API login. So every con credential which is required to log in onto it, make sure it always get rotated because this way, if somebody will get attacked or if somebody will in process to hack your infrastructure cluster. So this way you can avoid this kind of risk. Also, you can review, review third-party integration before enabling them. So make sure when you try to access any third-party tool or feature, you always review this, review that feature, review that packages before implementing 
or taking in your production cluster. Encrypt secret at rest. So whenever you use secrets uh, to log in service account or any user, you must secure, you must use, you must encrypt those script uh, secrets content. Like if you specify username, password, so that password and username should be encrypted. On Linux, you can use base64 uh, security uh, process, which encrypt your plain text format into uh, encrypted format. So you can use that. And receiving alert for security and updates. Always uh, tick for and ready for uh, al get the alert of the security updates or vulnerability updates. So you can patch your cluster, Kubernetes cluster components. So that's it for this video. Uh, and uh, enjoy Kubernetes security. If you have any query, you can comment me uh, below this video and I will try to uh, resolve and try to represent you by with the diagram and make you understand that what whatever your query is so that's it for this video I'll come in the next video uh, with a new concept okay so meanwhile be safe and take care bye bye